ECG shows sinus bradycardia at 50 per minute, which is common in inferior wall infarction due to enhanced vagal activity, a usual association of inferior wall infarction. In fact, inferior wall infarction is considered to be the commonest pathological cause of sinus bradycardia. PR interval is 200 millisecond, which is the upper limit of normal. AV blocks are also quite common in inferior wall infarction as the right coronary occlusion, which is often the cause of inferior wall infarction, also impacts the AV nodal blood supply. Please subscribe to this channel for future updates. Click on the subscribe button. Press the bell icon after that for all updates. Pathological Q waves are noted in inferior leads 2, 3 and AVF. Pathological Q waves have a width of at least 40 millisecond and an amplitude of at least 25% of the ensuing R wave. Although these are the classic criteria, other criteria known as thrombolysis in myocardial function criteria and consensus 2000 and consensus 2007 criteria are also there. TIMI criteria looks at R wave in addition to Q waves. According to TIMI criteria, any Q wave of 30 millisecond or more duration in two contiguous leads or any Q or R wave of 10 millisecond or less width and 0.1 millivolt or less amplitude in V2 and R wave of 40 millisecond or more width in V1 are of similar significance. Inferior leads show the classical code ST segment elevation along with T wave inversion. ST segment depression is noted in 1 and AVL and V6, which is often considered as reciprocal ST depression, though the jury is still out whether it represents ischemia at a distance. ST elevation is more in lead 3 compared to lead 2. This finding would suggest right coronary artery as the culprit vessel. If there is associated ST elevation in V1 indicating right ventricular infarction, it becomes a powerful marker of occlusion of right coronary artery in the proximal or mid segment. In inferior wall infarction due to left circumflex coronary artery occlusion, ST elevation in lead 2 is higher than that in lead 3. In addition to these findings, an RSR prime pattern in V1 and slurred S wave in leads 1 AVL and V2 to V6 are seen. The QRS width is 120 milliseconds. These findings indicate a right bundle branch block, which is unusual in inferior wall infarction and may represent an independent finding. Here are the references on this topic. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for future updates and click on the bell icon for all updates. Thank you.